Jacob with My Untangled Media. Today we are going to be trying out a new product from Google called Maps Engine Lite. Um, Google's been doing a lot of switching up their map software under the hood, and this is one of the new functionality that they've rolled out recently. There's a lot of different things you can do. As you see when you land here, you can uh, draw your places individually, you can import your data, organize different things, style different things. One of the companies that we work with uh, at My Untangled Media is a real estate company. We thought we'd try importing some of their data for their weekly market updates that they send out. Thought it would be helpful for folks to be able to see their listings plotted out on a map. So that's what we're going to show you today. So when we get here right now, we're going to start with a new map. So right away you'll see we just start with a blank map of the United States. There's nothing on it. Google's just waiting for us to do something. Right away, we've got a couple of areas over here on the left that we want to deal with. Uh, first of all, we want to give our map a title. Um, obviously, you want to give this map a title, something that folks will be able to not only comprehend, but potentially find via Google searching uh, if, they, if you choose to make the map public, uh, which we're going to do. So I will call this um, Listing Highlights June 28th. 2013. And then for a description, again, you want to try to use something that's maybe, you know, pays a little bit of attention to keywords, but also tells folks what they're going to find in this map. Why are they looking at this map? Um, you know, what, what are they going to see on here? So we're going to tell them this is um, weekly open houses, uh, we'll say price changes, and new listings make sure we spell right, uh, for Barrett Sotheby's International Realty. And I can even put their URL if I want. Okay. So again, this just shows folks what they're going to see here in this map. So you can see this shows up right over here. So the next thing we need to do now, now that we've given our map a title, is actually put something in here. So I'm going to import. So we're talking about the import feature. If we wanted to just start adding things on the map, we could certainly do that. We could start up here and search for a place and add it to the map, um, plot things here and there, make lines and all that stuff. But we're going to just start right here and import some data. So this is the key part because if you've got your data prepared, it makes it real, real easy, and we do. So we are going to choose a file to upload, and I've got a market update for map Excel spreadsheet here. I'm going to click open. So what's going to happen is I've got my spreadsheet formatted with different column headings, and these are all the column headings right here. And the first thing that Google wants to know is, where are the addresses? Obviously, this is a map. So the most important thing is the address of the things we're trying to map. So I've got a couple of different columns here, and I'm going to click off address. And I've also got city in a different column. If I just had my address and city in one column, then I could just use that. But since I've got it broken up a little bit, I'm going to tell Google to look at these both of these columns on my spreadsheet. I could also have a column that has just latitude and longitude for my particular properties and tell Google to go off of that instead. So then I'm going to say continue. The next thing that Google wants to know is a column title for my markers. So you'll see this once they're imported, but when I click on a marker, basically the little heading on the bubble that shows up is, is what I'm choosing here. So I do want to do that so that when folks click on something and they see something, they know exactly what it is immediately. I think I'll just use this column called property, which I happen to know I populated with the property address itself as well. You'll see you couldn't choose the same fields that you used or the same columns that you used um, uh, for your mapping column, so I've created a different column called property. I'm going to say finish. Google's going to work. There aren't tons of data in here, just to keep it quick. There's only 13 things. Uh, in my spreadsheet, but as you can see, Google immediately plots them on the map for me. So that's pretty cool. If I scroll out a little, you can see in this basic area, I've got my open houses here, 
I've got their titles, which is really the address. Remember, I chose that field. I also imported MLS numbers, a status. Their address and city is again listed here. These are the columns in the spreadsheet that we use to actually plot them. There's no value here because there's no open house for this particular one. I've got a list price and I've got a place that folks can click to see more details about the listing. This particular listing here on Two Crest Circle actually has an open house, so in that data field it's populated with the date and time of the open house. So that's pretty cool, uh, but it's kind of, well, boring, first of all, because everything just sort of looks the same, and also I can't really tell from this which properties have open houses, which properties are maybe new listings or have had price changes and such. So there's a lot of different other options in here which we'll go through real quick. So first of all, there's different layers in this map and really, or there's the ability to layer things in Google Maps, though I've only got one layer for the purposes of keeping this video as short as possible. Uh, but I'm able to add different layers. I could overlay um, other open houses, say, so this particular layer could just be uh, Barrett Sotheby's listings, but I could have another layer of all open houses for Concord or all open houses for Acton. Um, again, perhaps we'll do a more advanced video at another time, but for this, for this particular instance, we're just going to use this one layer. This shows up when folks are looking at the map, so uh, by default it pulls in the name of my spreadsheet for the layer, and that's pretty lame, so I'm just going to click right there and I'm going to edit this layer name. Uh, so, again, it's listing highlights is the title of the map, and really that's what these are, but we'll just say, um, uh, we'll just say, uh, Barrett listings, say, just to make it quick. Okay. Now, you see I've got all my items here, and they all have one little uh, red icon. We have a lot of different options here. For instance, if I click on the style icon, currently what... Google Maps Engine Lite is doing is it's giving them all a uniform style. And I can change that uniform style by making it blue or making it a square or a star. Or I can click on more icons and make them all a parking symbol just like that, which clearly doesn't make too much sense. But again, that just takes my boring red icons and makes them all boring a different icon. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do individual styles, or I'm sorry, I'm going to actually do something else, but I'll show you how to do individual styles. If I wanted to go in and individually style each icon differently, for instance, I want 13 Willow Street to have a green circle. It now does. In Burroughs, I want to have my parking icon. It now does. I don't want to go do that for all 13, though. I've got an easier way to do it. So if I click over here again and I say, I'm st instead I'm going to style by status. In my spreadsheet, I've got a column that has the status. There's new, there's open, and there's price change. So by default, Google just sort of picks some colors and assigns them. Uh, but again, eh, it's a little boring and it doesn't really tell me too, too much. So. Let's say I want to do something different here. All of the new listings, and there's seven of them, if I click on this, I can change those. So let's make the new listings, perhaps we'll, actually, perhaps what we'll do for new listings is we'll star them with a blue star for Barrett Sotheby's. For open houses, maybe I want to highlight those differently. So if I click on more icons, Maybe I'll give those a house. Makes sense, right? So the open houses have little houses, and the new listings have little stars. And we've got one price change on here, and so maybe for that particular column, I'll give that a dollar sign. So now, if I zoom in here a little bit, so now my map's got a, a, a few things going on. It's got little stars here for the new listings and you see if I hover over here it highlights all of them for me my open houses have these little houses and my price change has a little dollar looks pretty good um, the next thing I want to try to do is I think it would be cool if folks could see 
uh, these ones with open houses, if they could see the times right here on the map, and they don't have to click and, and scroll around like that if they want to just quickly get a view of what time the open houses are. So if I go over to labels, currently you'll see it's set as having no labels. I can choose to label them from any of my column headers, but what I think I'll do is I'll put my choose my open house column, which I happen to know had the open house times in it. So now you'll see those nicely show up right here on my map so folks can easily see. So this is 1 to 2.30, this is 2 to 4, and they can plan their routes accordingly. Now, there are many, many, many different ways to style your maps, and you can get them as complicated as you want with different layers and stuff. There's ranges. For instance, um, let's say I wanted to go in here and style by list price and different ranges. I can see homes listed from uh, a million and above um, are in a particular color, and I can change that color or I can change that icon. These are the real expensive ones, so I'll give them a dollar icon there. You know, the, the houses that are, are um, between 365 and 429, there's three of them here. Those are a different color. So again, there's different ways to do this. And once your map is published and it's public, uh, the cool thing, or one of the really cool things, is folks will have the ability to go in here and re rework this data on their own if they'd like to see ranges as opposed to categories and such. So I'm going to go back here, though. And I'm going to continue um, with the way that we had it before. So new are going to get stars like that. Open are going to get little houses. And price change is going to get this little dollar. Okay. The next thing I want to do, and we are almost there, the next thing that I want to do is let's take a look at what we've got in... Whoa. Let's not scroll like crazy here. Well, let's take a look at what we've got in this little info box. So everything that I've had in my spreadsheet was pulled into the little bubbles automatically. The MLS number, status, uh, address, etc. So I've got my things sort of um, delegated through their little icons, whether they're open houses or new listings and such. I'm not so sure that I really need that here. So if I want to remove some things from the, the bubble here, I can click on this little gear icon, and I can remove, let's say, status. And now it's gone. Okay. I can do that with anything I want. The other thing that's great here is, so now when folks are looking at this map, wherever it is, if it's embedded or shared, if I want to take a look at this house over at 8 Franklin Place, I can click as a user right here on this directions and I'll get my directions right here I'll be able to map from where I am and get me right to this place right here so now we've got our bubbles cleaned up a little bit we've got our icons we've got our labels I'm noticing that it's kind of hard to read our labels and it's a little hard to see all of our icons with the map background the way it is and Google calls this the base map right here. So what I want to do is I want to change that. I'm going to click on this little icon and you'll see there's lots of different base maps. I can do satellite uh, which makes it probably even harder to read. Um, I can do terrain maps which makes it fairly easy to read. One of the things that's real easy is if you just sort of take out all the coloring altogether and sort of make it a dim map and then it's real easy to see all of your overlays like that so maybe I'll just leave it like that for now okay so we're in pretty good shape now the next thing I want to show you is now that your map is pretty much the way you want it what do you want to do with it? Well, let's share it. So, if I click on share, there's a couple things I can do. I can email a link to it. I can share it right to Google+, Facebook, or Twitter. You can see that right now I'm the owner of the map, obviously, because I've created it, and it's a private map. If I want to embed it in a website, which I do want to do, or I want to make it searchable on Google, which I do want to do, then I want to change this from private 
to you public on the web. Okay? I'm going to make it so that anyone can view it, but not edit it. And then I'm going to say save. If I want to add people to collaborate with me on this map, uh, maybe there's uh, folks at, at the company who want to add different pieces of information or people that want to add different uh, things, places of interest, things that folks might want to do around the area. I can invite people here and have them either edit the map or view the map, but if I want them to collaborate with me, I want them to be able to edit it. So it's a great way to share out your maps with other folks, either to edit them or just to see them. Okay, so now that that's done, now I can go over here to my little open folder, and at this point I can start a new map, open an existing map, delete this map, or you'll see this link to embed my map on a site. If I click that, you'll see Google, Google gives me an iframe code that I can use. By default, I've got a width and height of 640 by 480. If my blog or, or website that I'm putting it into needs different dimensions, which I know mine does, maybe I want to change it right here. But all I need to do is copy and paste this code into my website, and my map will appear. Thanks very much for uh, joining us, and uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me, and have fun with Google Maps Engine Lite.